Hi, my name is Megan, and this is Everything Lit. Today, I am starting a new series on my channel. So this is something that I am going to call Fangirl's Guide to, and then an author's name. So it has its own little intro card. The Fangirl's Guide to Sarah Addison Allen. Little history, when I was younger, I was kind of a pretentious reader. I wanted my favorite author to be, like I named Hemingway at one point, I named Charlotte Bronte. If I ever said Charles Dickens, that was a straight up lie. <laughs> so I used to say that, I think I said Charlotte Bronte was my favorite author, just because she wrote my favorite book at the time. That's not true anymore. And I discovered after a while that my actual favorite author is Sarah Addison Allen. I have read every single one of her books and this series on my channel is going to be highlighting authors that I love who I've read every single one of their books and so giving you a comprehensive overlook at their body of work and telling you where you should start if you want to get into this author's writing or just I'm gonna give you a little synopsis of each book. Whichever book stands out to you, it's probably where you should start. Let's talk about it. I have my laptop with me so that I can give you some Goodreads stats, see how my review ranks with other people's. So let's talk about Sarah Addison Allen. Her work is considered Southern magical realism. They all have a Southern setting in Georgia or the Carolinas, North or South. She is from North Carolina and credits her upbringing for the Southern flavor of her novels. Her first book was published in 2007. My history with this author is I actually found her books when I worked at my local library. One of her books, well, first of all, I'm an obsessive girl. So I wanted to read the entire library from A to Z. So I went to the fiction section, I started at A, and I found Sarah Addison Allen. Wild. I didn't end up reading all the books, and in fact, I didn't make it even through the A's. I was like, no, this is dumb, I want to read what I want to read. But my favorite author came out of it. So first, I'm going to talk about each book in publication order, and I'll give you some comparisons, whether it's movies or books, and then I'm gonna talk about the tropes that are in each book, and then at the end I'll talk through the order that I read them in, how maybe make a few recommendations if you like certain genres or if you read certain things, and just talk generally about her writing and the other authors who can be compared to her while not like being book specific. Sarah Addison Allen has published seven novels and a few short stories. Started in 2007 with Garden Spells. This is about two sisters, Claire and Sydney Waverly, and they live in a small town where the Waverly family has a long history. They have an apple tree that is, it is rumored will give you visions or show you who you're supposed to fall in love with or just it will, it is a magical apple tree. So there are a lot of rumors about them and a lot of suspicion. They're kind of outsiders, even though they have this magical tree available to them. And this book is about the two sisters, Claire and Sydney. Sydney ran away as soon as she could, got into a relationship, had a kid, and now she's trying to escape that relationship and come back home. Her sister Claire stayed in this small town and has opened a like catering business because she has been tending to the apple tree and the garden around the house and her baking can influence people. Different herbs or different flavors can make you feel sad or nostalgic or think you had the best time of your life. It opens people up or it makes them it makes them feel things. Each person in this family has a special gift and that is why rumors abound because Sydney has a gift when she cuts hair and I don't remember what that means. This book starts when Sydney comes back to town. She and Claire have to navigate living in the same place again. The kind of betrayal it feels like of leaving someone behind and this is really focused on the sister dynamic and there is a romance. So the main tropes in here are magical garden, 
outcast family, family that there are a lot of rumors about, which of course brings to mind the comparison to Practical Magic. And that is a comparison that this book gets a lot, and I think it's fair. I might also compare this to Wild Beauty. Now I haven't read Wild Beauty, but I believe the magical garden trope is very much a thing in that book. And that's, that's why I would compare the two. I gave this book five stars and I think it was the second book I read by Sarah Addison Allen. I did not start with this one, though most people do. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.06, which is crazy good, out of 95,000 ratings. Amazing. The second book that Sarah Addison Allen wrote was The Sugar Queen. And this was the first book I read by her. This is about Josie. She lives in her mother's house and feels very stifled by that. And Josie, because of her mother's strict policies, has a secret closet filled with romance books and candy and travel magazines. And that is her secret closet. One day, she wakes up and finds Della Lee Baker, a woman from the other side of town, wrong side of the tracks, in her closet and she won't leave. So this is Josie trying to get Della Lee to leave, trying to help her figure out what to do. And then there is another storyline following Chloe. She owns a little sandwich shop in this town and her boyfriend has just cheated on her and she's coming to terms with that. And she and Josie, their stories intersect. This was one of my favorite of Sarah Addison Allen's books for a very long time. This deals with the mother-daughter relationship, the father-daughter relationship, and just family dynamics in general. Some of the tropes in this one are second chance, romance, and first love, a sort of fairy godmother vibe. I would say that both of these have slight fairy tale vibes, like southern fairy tale. A couple books that I would compare to The Sugar Queen are Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. One of the reasons I compare Dumplin' to The Sugar Queen is because they both feature a fat character who is gaining her autonomy and falling in love for the first time. Now the big difference is in Dumplin', Willow Dean is 16, 17. This is YA. This is adult and Josie is 27. So about a 10 year difference here. And this one was published first. Part of me thinks that I only connect these because they feature a fat main character. However, the mother-daughter dynamics in both are also pretty similar. It features a mother who is very beautiful, a debutante, um, well known for her manners and dress, and the daughter feels like she's not living up to those standards and automatically is not what her mother wants just because she is fat. Another comparison for this would be The Safe House by Nicholas Sparks. Now, I have only seen the movie, so I am comparing it to the movie, but I do think some of the fairy tale, fairy godmother vi matchmaking vibes are very similar. I gave this five stars. This has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.98 out of 52,000 ratings. So it is less well read and the rating is slightly less. The next book is The Girl Who Chased the Moon. This is, I believe it is considered YA. And this is about Emily whose mother has just recently died. So she goes to live with her grandfather in a small Southern town. He is known for being the tallest man in town, possibly the tallest man in the state. He's made records and people are kind of afraid of him. And this is about Emily learning more about her mother's childhood and why she never knew her grandfather and their house where the wallpaper might change to suit your mood. There are unexplained lights that look like the moon that skip across the yard and a woman with a bakery whose cakes you can smell all throughout town. I actually have read this the most recently other than Sarah Addison Allen's newest book. Um, I bought this in hardcover ages ago, didn't read it, didn't read it, and then we'll talk about it. But there was a six to seven year span where she did not release a book. So I read this in that gap so that I could have a little bit of my favorite author. So some of the tropes in this are first love slash forbidden love, little YA forbidden love. Her grandfather says you shouldn't see that boy. 
just saying, but also New Girl in Town and there are themes of grief and Sarah Addison Allen writes a lot about family dynamics and in this it is the girl and her grandfather and her relationship with her mother but her mother is absent in this one. So I struggled to come up with books to compare this to because I I feel like there's something that I've read that is similar but I can't think of it off the top of my head. A couple of the books I was thinking of comparing it to are, are horror and that doesn't fit the right vibe, you know? So I did think of a few movies. This does low-key give Gilmore Girls vibes if you like Gilmore Girls and um, Secondhand Lions. If you have seen that movie with Haley Joel Osment, I think, and Michael Caine, this reminds me of that movie because I saw the movie first. And I gave this five stars, of course, and this has a 3.97 average rating with 58,000 ratings. So this and The Sugar Queen are kind of on the same level, not as well read, not as well loved as Garden Spells. Next, I want to talk about The Peach Keeper. This used to be my favorite Sarah Addison Allen book, and in fact, I would love to adapt this into a movie. I want to be the screenwriter that adapts this because it is wonderful. So this follows two young women, Willa and Paxton. Paxton Osgood is revamping, renovating this famous house on a ridge called the Blue Ridge Madam. And it was sort of a hotel for a while. It was a manor house. She is renovating it and underneath the peach tree, she finds a skeleton. And of course this halts all the renovations and the mystery needs to be solved. Why is the skeleton there and who is it? How did it get there? And then we follow Willa Jackson. Willa has a sporting goods shop in this touristy town and has just tried to keep her head down and make up for being the wild child that she was in high school. Her family used to own the Blue Ridge Madam. So she gets drawn into Paxton's mystery that they're trying to solve and why their families have hated each other because their grandmothers have had this feud that has been passed on to them. I love the mystery in this and the romance in this. Just wonderful. This is another one where there are familial, familial relationships explored. So some of the tropes in this would be enemies to lovers and like best friend's brother. This also gives very cozy mystery vibes because it's got a small town, there's a mystery, but it's not too dark, it's not too violent, it's just gentle and mysterious. And the only comp that I could really think of for this one was actually Fried Green Tomatoes. The friendship in that and the mystery in that is reminiscent of this. It also deals with um, so the grandmothers are still alive in this. Uh, Willa and Paxton's grandmothers, who don't speak, are still alive. And it's sort of a two or an intergenerational, two timelines kind of story where we learn about the grandmothers as well as the granddaughters in current day. And so I think with Fried Green Tomatoes, we have the older woman telling her story. And then we have the flashbacks showing that story. Like, you know what I mean? There are two timelines happening and two different concurrent stories. This has a 3.85 average rating on Goodreads out of 60,000 ratings. So it is actually less well rated than any other book we've talked about so far, but it was nominated for Best Fiction in 2011 in the Goodreads Choice Awards. So I wonder if more people read it because of that who wouldn't normally have read it. Interesting. Now I am going to briefly talk about one of Sarah Addison Allen's short stories. So that is in Firefly Dance, she has a few interconnected short stories. Her stories are about this young girl, her grandmother, and her aunt. So Louise runs between the two houses and it's really just a coming of age growing up and when she's young in the first book her grandmother seems this indomitable unwavering person and then we see her point of view about the people around her change as she grows 
and how they change and grow. I did give them, I loved it, it's five stars. So some of the tropes in this are coming of age, grief. I didn't really have any comps for this though. I know there are probably a million billion because it's such a general like growing up story. This is not specific to Sarah Addison Allen, but the book as a whole has 3.6 as its average rating and only 1,902 ratings. It's not super popular and I kind of get why. Now let's talk about Lost Lake. This is the book that I remember the least of and ha liked the least as well. This is about Kate and her daughter Devin. Kate has just lost her husband and for the last year she has been in sort of a fog of grief. Her daughter Devin finally gets her moving by suggesting they go visit Lost Lake, these cabins where her mother first fell in love. And so this follows their story as well as that of E.B., who is the owner of Lost Lake and has lost her husband. And developers now want to buy this campgrounds, these cabins from her and develop it into who knows what. So this is really about grief and grieving and what we lose throughout life, whether that's you know childhood innocence, the magic of believing in fairies or the people you love. This has the tropes of dealing with grief, found family, and a bit of a second chance romance. So I might weirdly <laughs> compare this to Up to No Gouda because in this, the main character has lost her husband in the past year and is dealing with that grief. So she moves back to her hometown and Lost Lake, the main character Kate, in dealing with the grief for her husband, goes to visit these lakeside cabins and this campground to like where she spent a lot of her childhood. And in this, the main character, while she is solving a murder mystery, meets a cast of characters and becomes close with them, reconnects with an old friend. In this, Kate reconnects with Evie, who has been there since she was a child. They create a family out of the people who come visit this lakeside retreat over the course of the summer. It is one of my goals to maybe reread this this year just because I haven't read it in so long and I didn't care for it when I read it. So I wonder if my opinions would change. I actually gave this four stars. I think this is the only Sarah Addison Allen that has gotten less than five stars from me. And this has an average 3.88 rating out of 34,000 ratings. So what's interesting to me is as we've talked, her books published first had more readers and more ratings. And then as time went on, people fell off or forgot about her. And I wonder if the amount of time in between book releases will, is related to that. However, despite only having 34,000 ratings, this was a nominee for Best Fiction on the Goodreads Choice Awards in 2014. Next is First Frost. This is actually a sequel to Garden Spells, and this takes place five to ten years later. Bay is now 1415, and this follows Sydney's daughter Bay as she falls in love for the first time and tries to catch the attention of a local boy. Claire has started a new venture in creating candies and is struggling with opening a new business and she's focusing too much on work, not spending enough time with her family. And Sydney is longing for a baby with her new husband who we met in the first book because they've been together for a while and now she wants another child. And then a stranger shows up and uproots everything. I don't remember much about this either and I don't remember loving it especially compared to the first book Garden Spells. So some of the tropes in this are first love but also um, reconnecting with an estranged partner and there's a lot more magical realism in this because the apple tree is having some issues. So the famous Waverly Apple Tree is struggling and that has a lot of consequences for the family. So even though I have not read it, I think I might compare this to The Simplicity of Cider by Amy Reichert because they both deal with a family 
and their farm and creating a new business. It deals with sisters. So even though I didn't love this book, I still gave it five stars. This has a 3.97 average rating on Goodreads out of 34,000 ratings. So this has 60,000 less ratings than the first book, Garden Spells. This one was also a nominee for Best Fiction in 2015 in the Goodreads Choice Awards. And finally, we come to Other Birds. If you've watched uh, my best or favorite books of 2022, you know that this was in my top three. Um, I'm pretty sure it was almost my number one favorite book of the year because I read this in the summer and I didn't read my actual favorite book until October. And this is about the Delawisp, a condominium on Mallow Island. Zoe is our lead character and she has just moved in, freshly 18. Her mother died several years ago and she has inherited this condo. So she's trying to figure out and reconnect with her mother um, and figure out her mom's past. She meets the other tenants of the Delawisp and makes friends with them. It is fantastic. Some of the tropes in this are also found family. There are sister relationships, father-daughter relationships. There is a slight romance, as there is in all of Sarah Addison Allen's books, and this does have sort of a magical element and deals with ghosts. I don't know that I've mentioned in any other reviews of this, but our main character Zoe has a little pet bird that no one else can see. There is definitely a mystery element to this as one of the tenants has just died when Zoe moves in. Some comparisons or some comps for this would be The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is found family, but it is more about a man finding his family in terms of equals, but also children and taking care of children. So it's a little different, but the coziness and the oddness there's there's this is fantasy so the oddness of the children that he's taking care of kind of corresponds to the magical element in this and then even though i haven't read it i would compare this to a very secret society of irregular witches by sangu mandana this also i believe has the found family trope because it is about a young woman who is very lonely and then gets invited to basically nanny and tutor these three young witches and she is sort of brought into their world and of course i gave this five stars this has a four point 11 or 4.11 average rating out of 25,000 ratings and was a nominee for best fiction in 2022. Now what's crazy there was a seven year gap between this book being released and her newest book and let me tell you for the real fans that was a rough time. So general comparisons for Sarah Addison Allen and authors that might be similar to her though I can't guarantee yet because I haven't read them. One of which is Heather Weber and I did buy this because her writing is frequently compared to Sarah Addison Allen. So this is Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe. Other books of hers include In the Middle of Hickory Lane and The Lights of Sugarberry Cove which all sound very cute and I'm hoping to give this author a try, maybe find a new favorite. Another author frequently compared is Alice Hoffman, and I'll put a couple of her books on the screen. I think I have one or two, but could not find them. So Alice Hoffman is renowned for her magical realism and her magical elements to her stories. There's always some slight fantasy twist. They deal with the fantastical, such as mermaids and angels, Personally, between the two, I think I prefer Sarah Addison Allen, but I have only read two or three of Alice Hoffman's books and she has a much larger body of work. Another author who I haven't read anything from but would hope to check out would be Lisa Van Allen. I'm going to put The Night Garden on the screen. This is another magical realism, chiclet kind of book. So this takes place in New York and involves a colorful garden maze that is said to reveal things to you and have magical abilities. I can see why this would be compared to garden spells, especially since The Night Garden came out in 2014. So maybe even inspired by Sarah Addison Allen, who knows? Another author commonly compared to Sarah Addison Allen is Sarah Painter. I wonder if some of these authors are only compared because they have similar names. Sarah Painter, Lisa Van Allen, 
Sarah Addison Allen. Interesting. Interesting. Sarah Painter often has more urban fantasy elements to her books, it seems, or more overtly witchy and magical books, whereas Sarah Addison Allen is more subtle. So those are some authors that can generally be compared. And another comparison would be Karen Hawkins, author of The Book Charmer. Now, I haven't read this yet, but this has also been compared to Sarah Addison Allen. In fact, one of the reasons I picked this up, I don't know if you can see this little blurb right here, but that blurb says, entrancing, fans of practical magic and garden spells will love this book. And I said, I do love garden spells. Let me buy it. And this is about a librarian in North Carolina and books may talk to her and tell her of things to come. So it has that magical realism element. It has small town bookish vibes and North Carolina, which most of Sarah Addison Allen's books take place in. I do want to give like an overview of Sarah Addison Allen's writing. So let's talk about the detractors from her books. So people who give low ratings or have criticisms of her writing often criticize that they are cheesy. They criticize that the they are cheesy, they are romance heavy, her overall genre would be magical realism and she might be considered chick lit. And that is a genre that is looked down upon, unfairly. People have also called her books boring, which if you don't like a slower story that's very character driven, I can understand that criticism. These books are incredibly white. There is not a lot of diversity. The other criticism is that she does at times rely on stereotypes for her side characters and for some of her characters. So the two instances where I can see this being most prevalent is in The Sugar Queen. So Josie and her mother are very well off. Her father was rich, left them a lot of money, and they have a housekeeper that doesn't speak English and she is a, of indeterminate background. It's mostly the mother, but they joke about, they're not really sure where this woman comes from. So if you've seen Knives Out, there is a running joke um, where the rich family doesn't know where the main character comes from. They say she's from Ecuador, she's from Guatemala, she's from the Dominican Republic. They just don't know where she's from because to them it's all the same. And those those vibes, because like that's racist, those vibes are very much in how the housekeeper is treated in this book. So that is a detractor. And um, some criticisms of other birds. Zoe's mother, she is Cuban, and some of the reveals in here about what she was like when she was younger are a bit unsavory. So it really makes it feel like the minorities in this are have the unsavory professions. I don't know how to talk about this because I didn't notice it until it was pointed out, but I could see how people could take offense. These are all of Sarah Addison Allen's books, but let me do a little rearranging and show you. We'll just do a couple of different stats. So these are the order in which I read Sarah Addison Allen's books. So I read The Sugar Queen first and then Garden Spells, Peach Keeper, Lost Lake First Frost. I saved, so this is actually, this is her third release and I saved it for last. And I read this all before Other Birds came out so that I could be caught up with her works. So this is the order in which I would put these in terms of favorites. Other Birds, her newest release, is my absolute favorite top book of hers. And then we have The Sugar Queen, which is the very first book I read. So most recent and first are my top two. And then The Peach Keeper, which actually has a really low rating. And the highest rated by Goodreads would be right in the middle of the stack for me. So for comparison, and maybe I'll try to put some things on the screen. Let me get a shot of this. And then let's put these in order of Goodreads ratings. Let's run through the ratings again. This is how Goodreads would rate them. So Other Birds has a 4.11. Garden Spells is a 4.06. The Sugar Queen is 3.98. The Girl Who Chased the Moon is 3.97. First Frost is also a 3.97. Lost Lake has a 3.88. 
The Peach Keeper has a 3.85 and the lowest rated is Firefly Dance, which has a 3.60. So this is how Goodreads would rate them. And then let's put them in order of most read to least read. Interestingly, this is most read to least read. So Garden Spells, her first release, is the most read and the second highest rating, which I think is really impressive to have kept an over 4.0 rating with 90,000 ratings. And then we have The Peach Keeper, which is actually fairly low rated, but is the second most read. The Girl Who Chased the Moon has about 58,000 ratings. So The Girl Who Chased the Moon has a lower rating than The Sugar Queen, but has more readers by about 6,000. Interesting. And then Lost Lake only has 34,000 ratings, but is rated pretty high for that. And then First Frost, Other Birds, her newest release, only has 25,000 ratings right now, but a 4.11. So this is the highest rated, but second least read. So I think really only the fans of Sarah Addison Allen, like the big fans, have read it and rated it already. So I wonder like this time next year if this average rating for other birds will have gone down as more people read it throughout the year interesting stuff we have sarah addison allen's most read book and her least read book and that makes sense because there are other authors in this um rating so if we don't count that one we have her most read book and her least read book is her newest release and then this is the highest rated and if we exclude the short stories this one is the lowest rated. So highest rated, lowest rated, both my two favorites. <laughs> what does that say? That's crazy. So a couple final recommendations and a couple final thoughts on this. I love Sarah Addison Allen. I think looking at the statistics of her body of work is really interesting. I would say if you are generally a young adult reader, you love young adult books, whether it's contemporary or fantasy, I would suggest you start with The Girl Who Chased the Moon. This has the most young adult character and the most young adult focus while also being magical and wonderful, but it does have that like young angst that appeals to YA and I feel like this was marketed as YA when it first came out. I don't know if it would still be if it was released today. If you're a general reader, you like what's popular, you want to read the best of, I would say read Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. This is her newest release, so you're going to be up with the popular trends. This got a Barnes & Noble special edition release, so it is gaining popularity and will have a lot more readers. It could also be a good book, cl book club pick because there's a lot to talk about in this and many different characters and mysteries to explore. And if you are not that picky and you just want somewhere to start with this author, I would suggest starting at the beginning with her most read book, Garden Spells. This gives a good idea of what Sarah Addison Allen's writing is like, the themes that she'll explore in future books, and this has a story that is familiar if you love practical magic if you love alice hoffman if you love fried green tomatoes start with garden spells overall sarah addison allen is my favorite author i highly recommend you check her out any of her books really if you like magical realism romance and chiclet books thanks for watching and if you want to see more of the books I like or see what author I decide to cover next, you could like, you could subscribe, but really, you can do whatever you want. I'll see you next time.